الله في الجنة لها مقامات. To see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it also goes in accordance to three few levels. What kind of levels? There's some people who will see the face of Allah from time to time. From time to time. There's some people who will see the face of Allah once a week, every Friday. There's some people who will see the face of Allah every day. And there are some people who will get to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala twice a day. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by His greatest name to make all of us amongst those who will get to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day, twice a day insha'Allah ta'ala. Say Amen. My question is now, my brothers and sisters, how can I earn the love of Allah? Because I want to see His face. How can I earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And that's what I'm going to be talking about now, inshallah. But you have to, there's a condition. Do you want me to tell you how to earn the love of Allah? Yes or yes? Do you want me to tell you how to earn the love of Allah? I want you all to stand up. If you want me to tell you, if you don't stand up, I won't tell you. And I want you to hug the person next to you. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته I ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى as he has gathered us here today in the companionship of the angels I ask him سبحانه وتعالى by his greatest name I invoke him by his greatest name to gather us all in the company of the Prophet Muhammad in Jannah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he has gathered us here to gather us all upon love in the companionship of the Sahaba of the Prophet Muhammad I'm so pleased and honored to be here again and again. The brother said, roller coaster of emotions. Indeed, there will be a lot of roller coasters happening, especially tomorrow. For those who want to cry, especially tomorrow when we talk about the parents and the obedience of the parents. But today, I don't think I will find anything better and more beautiful in terms of a topic to talk about other than the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, I have come from very far. And I have used a mean of transportation to come to you today. I'm sure you have used different means of transportation. Some of you have used a car to drive here. Some of you have walked to come here. Some of you have flown to come here. Some of you may have swum to come here, I don't know. But if you want to, you have used different means to travel to here and to come here. But if you want to travel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what mean do you use? This is the question. If you want to travel to Allah, what kind of mean, of mode, of transportation mode do you use? You use your heart. And this heart has to be filled with what? It's got to be filled with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Mu'min. Al-Mu'min la yuridu shay'an a'zama min ridwanillah. Al-Mu'min la yuridu shay'an a'zam min ridwanillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ridwanullahi la yunalu bi shay'in a'zama min hubbi allahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
سجل عندك المؤمن the believer does not need nothing from this dunya more than the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you ask any believer what do you really 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 want the believer says I really want to please Allah I only seek to please Allah and to please Allah my brothers and sisters can only happen if you love Allah to please him you have to love him subhanahu wa ta'ala Hubbullah Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullah alayhi he says one of the pious predecessors he says Hubbullah huwa quwwatu al-qulub wa ghida'u al-arwah wa huwa an-nur wa huwa an-nur Ibn al-Qayyim says the love of Allah is the strength of the hearts he says, it is the sustenance to the souls. The sweetness of the hearts, the strength of the hearts is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is nothing better in this universe than something called the love of Allah. حب الله يتركك تعيش في عالم آخر. Loving Allah lets you live or live somewhere else. You feel like you don't live in this earth. You feel like you are walking on water. Why? Because your heart is filled with the love of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And if Allah loves you, what else do you need? If Allah is on your side, what else do you need? If Allah is your sustainer or your sustainer, what else do you need? Allah is on your side. Why? Because He loves you. If I were to tell you, my brothers and sisters, listen to me, please. If someone was to come and give you a gift, Asma, Asma. If someone was to come and give you a gift, what kind of gift? Every day, he gives you a present. Every day, he gives you a present. Today, he brings you a present. Tomorrow, he brings you another present. The third day, he brings you a third present, a fourth present. Every day, he gives you a present. How much will you love this person? Think with me. How much would you love this person? Every day, the person comes and gives you a gift. Let me ask you something else. How about if that same person, he comes and tells you, if you need anything, come to me. I'll give it to you. Anything, anything. You need a job, I help you. You want some, you have financial problems, come to me. I will help you. Your problem is mine, I'll take care of it. Anything you need, you have a problem with someone who has harmed you, you come to me, I look after you. Imagine if some person comes and tells you this. Anything you want, do not worry. I do not want you to worry. I want you to feel peace because now I'm on your side. Anything you want. You're looking for a job. If you're looking for a wife, come to me. I'll help you. You're looking for a husband, come to me. I will help you. A job, come to me. You have some financial difficulties, come to me. I'll take care of you. Any problem you have, anything you need, anything, I am your man. You come to me. How much would you love this person? How much would you love this person? How much admiration would you have for such a person? How about Allah? How about Allah? Ni'am. Doesn't he tell you the same? Anything you want, come to me. Anything you wish for, just come to me. Just make a step towards me. I will come running to you. Just come, just make a step. Try Allah, haven't you? Tried everything. Some of us have tried so many routes. Some of us have tried so many things. Some of us have tried even haram things. Why don't you give Allah a chance? He's awaiting for you to come to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me ask you a question. And be honest with me because Allah is watching you. 
Whoever loves Allah, raise his hands. Man yuhibbu Allah. Oh, you all love Allah? I have no doubt that you all love Allah. I swear by Allah that I have no doubt that you all love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have no doubt in my heart. You all love him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi alladhi la ilaha illa hu ma ja'ala Allahu salat al-fajr fi waqtiha illa liyamtahina hubbuka lah وما جعل الله صلاة العصر والعشاء والمغرب والظهر في وقتها إلا ليمتحن حبك له. I swear by Allah that Allah has not made the salah in its time like salat al-fajr in its precise time except that he wants to test and prove so that you love him. He wants to try you to test you whether you really love him. يا من فضلت الفراش على صلاة الفجر أين حب الله يا من فضلت المسلسلات على صلاة العشاء أين حب الله Those of you who have favored the bed the warm bed and the warm pillow versus صلاة الفجر versus the prayer of the فجر where is the love of Allah? You just said, you just said, I love Allah. Didn't you? You raised your hands. You did say you love Allah. Those of you who favored sleeping versus waking up at night and pray to Allah, where is the love of Allah? Those of you who waste your time chatting in haram way, or even halal way sometimes, but that chat is so much so that you waste your salah. Where is the love of Allah? Those sisters who have favored going out without hijab, going out without hijab to portray their beauty to people other than, than those that they're not supposed to show their beauty to. Where is the love of Allah? I hope Allah. Where is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah At-Tawbah, He gives us a test. Surah At-Tawbah, ayah number 24. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Qul in kana aba'ukum, number one. قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالٌ اِقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنَ تَرْضَوْنَهَا Eight. أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَجِهَادٍ فِي سَبِيلِهِ فَتَرَبَّصُوا حَتَّى يَ فَتَرَبَّصُوا Here I'm going to stop. Listen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ say. إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ If your fathers, وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ Your sons, we're supposed to love our parents, we're supposed to love our, our children, we're supposed to love our brothers, our kindreds, we're supposed to love our, our spouses, وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ We're supposed to love our عَشِيرَتُكُمْ Our families, our tribes, our kindreds, we're supposed to love them. The money, which the wealth which you have accumulated, and a business which you may fear decline. And all these, these buildings and properties which you also fear decline, which you have accumulated, are more beloved to you than Allah and His Prophet. Allah is saying all these eight are more beloved to you than Allah and His Prophet. Then wait. Wait for what? You love these things more than Allah and His Prophet? If I were to ask you a question, and excuse me because sometimes I touch things which I'm not supposed to, but because I love you for the sake of Allah. If your son has a bad grade, he comes from school and he failed or he flunked the entire semester, how unhappy would you be? I'm sure you'd be really, really upset. 
If your child, the same child, the same child misses salah, would you be as angry? Would you be as not pleased as that course which he has failed? A lot of us would say, yes, yes, Sheikh, I would, I would. Do you really? Do you really? Be honest with yourselves for once. For once, be honest with yourselves. Maybe some would, maybe some would and I would trust and I would believe him. But the majority of the Muslims, it's okay, honey. Please go and pray. But next time, don't forget. Allah Ghafur Rahim. It's okay. You can go to sleep. You're tired. If you have three things in your heart, listen. Mahabbatullah, number one, the love of Allah. Khawf min Allah, to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, hoping for his mercy. If you gather these three, I'm giving you something which I have never shared with nobody. I've done so much research, reading books and stuff, but listen to this. My conclusion is, if you have earned these three, love of Allah, fearing him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and hoping for his mercy, his love shall be greater than any love. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ And those who believe have intense love for Allah. Those who believe have intense love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ فَإِذَا نِنْتَ هَذَا سَرْتَ قَرِيبًا مِنَ اللَّهِ If you acquire these three, you shall be very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You shall earn the closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And like I said, if you are close to Allah, khalas, Allah is on your side. Who can harm you? Who can frighten you? Who can terrorize you? If Allah is on your side. No, nobody can. The Prophet Muhammad والسلام, says, Thalatha, this is in Bukhari and Muslim. Man kunna fihi wajad halawatan iman. By Allah, my brothers and sisters, what, when was the last time you prayed, you made sujood, you felt something so sweet, you did not want to raise your head from sujood? Or you were reading Quran, and all of a sudden you don't even know, without even know, all of a sudden your eyes start dripping tears. When was the last time you felt something so sweet in your salah? You prayed, all of a sudden you felt some serenity, you felt some comfort you have never felt before. The sweetness of Iman. The Prophet Muhammad says, The Prophet Muhammad says, Three. If these three you were to um, sort of earn them, you shall find the sweetness of Iman. You know this water? Bismillah. It has a taste. It doesn't taste anything. It's just water. So it's probably from Oslo. That's why it does not taste anything. <laughs> it's pure water. I was told that water in Oslo or water in Sweden, not Sweden, I'm sorry, in Norway, which is same like Sweden, is the most beautiful, amazing, in fact, pure water. You know, the tap water, you don't even have to go and buy water. Yesterday I said, I need to go buy some water. The brother was looking at me, Mr. Sheikh, we don't buy water here. You just go to the tank and just, you know, get your, I mean, tap water. I said, Achi, no, tap water is not good. He says, no. Here in Sweden is good. Anything, ha is that true or he lied? I don't know, I just followed what he said. Oh, that's in Norway. We are in Norway. I keep saying Sweden. Subhan al kareem because I'm going to Sweden soon, inshallah ta'ala. This water has some taste. The food that you ate today has some taste. The biryani that you ate today has some taste. Whatever it has some taste. Iman has taste. Iman has taste. The Prophet Muhammad says three things. Whosoever gets them, 
he would have the taste, he would taste the sweetness of Iman. One of them is, and yakun Allah wa Rasulhu ahabu ilayhi mimma siwahuma. That the love of Allah and his Prophet to him is the dearest thing than anything else and anybody else. Once Allah and his Prophet become more lovable to you than anything else, you shall taste the sweetness of Iman. Once and only once, the love of Allah and his Prophet become more lovable to you than anything else, then and only then you shall taste the sweetness of Iman, inshaAllah. I'm here, and next Tuesday I will go in, I'll be going back home, inshallah. And when I go back home, I will meet people that I love. The first thing I will do, I will just go and see them. I will go and meet my family and meet my wife, and I will meet my kids, which I hardly see. I will see them. My face will enlighten once I will see them because I love them. And they are just people like me. They eat, they drink, they sleep, they live, and they will die. Just like all of us. Yet, because you love them, you get happy to see them. When you love your family, you feel happy to see them. How about the seeing of the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The one that we all claim that we love. مَا مِنْ مُؤْمِنْ إِلَّا وَلَهُ أُمْنِيَّةِ هِيَ أَنْ يَرَى الله سبحانه وتعالى. Every mu'min, every believer has a wish. And that wish is to see Allah. Eventually, to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even Musa had that wish. He wanted to see Allah. Huh? Musa, he said to Allah in Surah Al-Araf, Rabbi, arini, anzur ilayk. Oh Allah. Musa built, earned the love of Allah so much so that he says, Oh Allah, I want to sleep at you. I want to see your face. Rabbi, arini, anzur ilayk. قال لن تراني ولكن انظر إلى الجبل فإن استقر مكانه فسوف تراني. Then Allah told him, you will not be able to see me, but look at that mountain. I'm going to reveal myself to that mountain. If that mountain, after I reveal myself to the mountain, stayed the same, then you shall see me. And then Allah subhanahu wa taala revealed Himself to the mountain. The mountain shook and became dust. Musa fainted. فَخَرَّ مُوسَى سَعِيقًا مُوسَى فَيْنْتِدْ فَلَمَّا أَفَاقَ قَالَ سُبْحَانَكَ تُبْتُ إِلَيْكَ وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ As soon as Musa fainted, when he woke up, the first thing he said, he says, سُبْحَانَكَ Praise be to you. Praise be to you. Praise be to you. سُبْحَانَكَ تُبْتُ إِلَيْكَ I have made Tawbah to you. Why Tawbah? What did you do, O Musa? I asked something without I wasn't supposed to ask. I asked to see Allah. I'm not supposed to see Allah. I asked to see Allah live in this dunya, in this dunya. I repent to you. I repent to you. I am the first believer. Believer in what? That in this dunya, you cannot see the face of Allah. But my brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Your face, faces, they shall see the face of Allah. When? When you shall see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah, in Jannah, in Jannah. And that because you love him. If you love him, you shall see his face. But if you don't love him, if you don't love Allah, how can you see his face subhanahu wa ta'ala? Qala, kalla, innahum arrabbihim yawma idin la mahjubun. Nay, Allah says, nay, nay, nay. Innahum arrabbihim yawma idin la mahjubun. They shall be neglected, ignored. Ignored from what? Prevented from what? Prevented from seeing the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because they did not really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They did not really believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you who believe in Allah, who love Allah, you shall see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And my brothers and sisters, you know what? رؤية الله في الجنة لها مقامات 
to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it also goes in accordance to three few levels. What kind of levels? There's some people who will see the face of Allah from time to time. From time to time. There's some people who will see the face of Allah once a week, every Friday. There's some people who will see the face of Allah every day. And there are some people who will get to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala twice a day. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his greatest name to make all of us amongst those who will get to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day, twice a day insha'Allah ta'ala. Say ameen. My question is now, my brothers and sisters, how can I earn the love of Allah? Because I want to see his face. How can I earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And that's what I'm going to be talking about now, inshallah. But you have to, there's a condition. Do you want me to tell you how to earn the love of Allah? Yes or yes? Do you want me to tell you how to earn the love of Allah? I want you all to stand up. If you want me to tell you, if you don't stand up, I won't tell you. And I want you to hug the person next to you. Isn't it love? Is the love in the air? We're talking about love and we're not hugging one another. Zakum Allah, thank you. Please take your seats. I have to see hugs. I have to see hugs. If you want to earn the love of Allah, I'm going to give you points. Try to remember as much as you can. If you want to take notes, do take notes. Whatever you do. But remember, try to remember. If you want to earn the love of Allah, number one, ta'atullah. Obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obedience of Allah will earn you the love of Allah. How many Arabs do we have here? Arabs. Hey, Arabs. How many Arabs do we have? Amongst the Arabs, how many Moroccans do we have here? Amongst the Moroccans, how many North Moroccans do we have? Probably everybody. Oh, mashallah, tabarakallah. I, salam, special salam to all of you. How many Pakistanis do we have? Mashallah, tabarakallah. How many Somalis do we have? There we go. Mashallah, tabarakallah. Mashallah, tabarakallah. My brothers from Somalia, I say, skawaran. May Allah bless all of you who are here. May Allah bless all of you who are here. I want to talk to the Arabs. You Arabs, long time ago, there was this love story between a man and a woman. Now everybody's listening all of a sudden. <laughs> there was this love story between a man and a woman. The woman's name is Layla. And the man's name is Qais. In Pakistan, we call them Majnoon Layla. This is how they call them in my country, my other country. I'm half Pakistani, half uh, Somali, half Arab. So I'm all together, all over. <laughs> so this guy, Qais, he loves Layla. And Layla loves Qais. And the guys in the tribe, they, were, they felt very jealous from Qais. Why? Because Layla was really beautiful. And, and she loves Qais. So they felt very jealous from Qais. All of a sudden, one day, all the guys, they disguised like Qais. They all disguised like Qais. They all make, you know, went, you know, and they looked like Qais. They put the same dress like Qais. And they came knocking at the house of Layla. The first guy came in, fake guy, of course. He's not true. He's not genuine. He's a fake guy. But it looks like Qais. He knocks at the door. A bunch of them are out there. The maid opens the door. She says, <laughs> A bunch of people looking like Qais. And then she goes back to Layla. And then she goes, Ya Layla. Ya Layla. There are a bunch of people out there. They want to see you. And they all claim to be Qais. Oh Layla. 
I don't know the real Qais from the fake one. Layla says, I know. Layla says, I know. Why? Because she loves Qais. So she says, I know. When Qais comes, tell him, Layla wants a piece of meat from your body. A piece of flesh from your body. So the fake Qais comes in, the first one. He knocks at the door. Yeah. What? Yeah, what? I want to see Layla. Then the maid says, okay, but Layla has a, you know, you want to see her? She has a condition. She wants a piece of meat from you, a piece of flesh. Then the fake Qais goes, what? I think Layla has gone cuckoo. <laughs> and then he leaves. The second Qais comes in. Yeah, yo, yeah, yo, back. I want to see Layla. The maid says, okay, Layla. She says, if you want to see her first, you will have to give her a piece of meat from you, from your body. What? Same thing. He goes back. Third, fourth, fifth, you know, all the fake Qais come, you know, and they all went back until the real Qais comes in. Da, 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 da. There's where Qais. <laughs> now Qais comes in. The real one. He knocks at the door. Yeah, yo, yo, back. What? I want to see Layla. Yeah, but Layla has a condition. If you want to see her, she wants a piece of meat of you. Now Qais thinks and he says, okay, go back to Layla and ask her where does she want it from? If she wants it from the shoulder, I'll give her from the shoulder. If she wants it from the back, I'll give her from the back. If she wants it from the leg, I'll give her from the leg. I'll give her anything she wants. Why? Because I truly love her. Do you get it, you people? You sleepy heads? Do you understand? I'm willing to give her everything she asks for. Why? Because I truly love her. وَلِلَّهَ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى وَلِلَّهَ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى If you love Allah, how much are you willing to give Him? How much are you willing to sacrifice for Him? How much are you really willing to do for Allah if you truly love Allah? Look! Qais was willing to give everything and anything. Why? Because he says, I truly love Allah. Ya salam. Number two, you love Allah? No, love Allah is not enough. You have to love somebody else. Who is that somebody else? Who? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You have to love who? Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So now, let me ask you, who really loves Rasulullah? Careful. Who loves Rasulullah? Uh, okay, okay, okay. You all claim you love Rasulullah. There was this story from a guy back home in Morocco. Um, am I supposed to say this story? I think I will say it. If you don't, you know, I'll say it. Anyways. You have two options with me. Either you love me or love me. Here's this guy, you know, in Morocco, you know those buildings, you know these buildings, some of these uh, rural buildings, they are so close to one another. So you have a building here and a building there, and people, they know each other, you know, the neighbors and stuff, and then you want some, let's say, salt, you just open the window, ah, Flana, oh, I want some salt, she comes and she throws it at you, and she says, uh, I, want, I want some tea, she takes the tea, then she throws it back, you know, and you know, they, they, they talk like that, you know, they deal like that, you know, it's just like very close, they know each other. They, so this guy, he opens the window every day, you know, because in the next apartment there, there is this girl that he looks at every day. He knows that she comes out from the window at 10 a.m. So every day, every morning, before 10 o'clock, he you know, dresses up, and then he just opens the window, and there she is. And then he looks at her. <laughs> he just looks at her. And then she looks at him. <laughs> and then there's that look and that, you know, it's happening, you know, the vibes. And then she goes back and the skin he goes back to. <laughs> the next day he gets ready to, to see her. He opens the window, 10 o'clock, and she's there. She comes in, he comes out. They don't talk, but just eye to eye, eye, eye nothing like that. <laughs> you know, it, <laughs> no, no, no. 
One day he opens the window and she's not there. <gasps> she's not there. And Miss Skinny feels so bad. The next day again he opens, she's not there. And the third day she's not there. <gasps> what happened to her? They came, they told him, oh, you know what? For the skin, he does not eat. He doesn't sleep. He lost weight. He takes his bowl of harira, Moroccan harira, and he sees her face there. He's miskeen. He lost it completely. So one day, they came to him, they said, you know what? She was walking in the beach. She's walking, and she, her footsteps are still there. So miskeen, he goes and he runs to the beach. In Morocco, he walks and then he, f you know, she's there, she left, halas. But her footsteps are still there. So he goes, he says, Allah, her footsteps are there. So he takes off his shoes and then he puts his finger, his thing. <laughs> he puts his little toe with the little toe, the big toe with the big toe. That's all toe, and then he puts his feet, says, Allah, my foot on her foot. He's following her footsteps. All right, back to reality. <laughs> if you love Rasulullah, you follow the footsteps of Rasulullah. Follow the footsteps of Rasulullah. Loving Rasulullah is not just by celebrating his birthday. Imagine Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman all sitting down huh, with a cake with those, uh, with those, uh, 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 what do you call them? Those uh, uh, candles. Uh, and then celebrating the birthday. Happy birthday. Happy. You know, it was that happened. What are you talking about? Celebrating the birthday of Rasulullah is by loving Rasulullah, is by mimicking Rasulullah, is by reviving the Sunnah of Rasulullah. I mentioned the name of Rasulullah, only some of you are saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you claim that you love Rasulullah. In the Battle of Badr, in the Battle of Badr, the Sahaba came in. They were not ready for the battle. In fact, they were not prepared. They were not aiming for the battle. They just came. Why? Because they came for their, for their well, the, the things that, that Quraysh took from them. So they happened that. Now they're facing the truth. The truth is, you have to face Quraysh. Now, the Prophet is lining them up. He's lining them up. And the Prophet, والسلام, is going around making sure that lines are straight. And there was a man with a big belly. A little big belly. His name is Sawad Nughaziyah. He has a big belly. And then he's they're lining up, but this guy he was a little bit ahead of the line because he had a big belly. So the prophet took his stick and he poked him. He says, go back, line up, line up, line up. And then the man says, oh, Rasulullah, one second. Ya Rasulullah, you hurt me. I want my right. I want my right. You hurt me. I want my right. The Sahaba, they were amazed. Umar al-Khattab took his sword. What are you talking about? These guys, Ya Rasulullah, he's a hypocrite. The Prophet says, le, 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 leave him, leave him, leave him, leave him. What do you want? And I want my right. You poked me and I need to poke you back. <laughs> Wallah, it's true. Go back, read the seerah. Ya Rasulullah, you know, you hurt me. Huh? Take, here, take the, the stick. Yalla, poke me back. Say, Ya Rasulullah, look, you, you have a shield. I have no shield. I have nothing. You know, take off your shield. Then the Prophet took off that armor. Ya Rasulullah, you, you look at me. I'm not wearing anything. You wear it. Take off. Take off the shirt. Take off that. And then the Prophet took the shirt and then the man went straight, hugged the Prophet, and he kissed his belly. Oh. <laughs> he kissed his belly. Then the Sahab, yeah, oh, oh, so what? Why did you do what you just did? Why? He says, Ya Rasulullah, look, look. We were not ready for this. I may die. Ya Rasulullah today, I may die. I want the last thing that I have done before I die is to have kissed your belly, Ya Rasulullah. The love of Rasulullah. Umm Habibah, the wife of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu She was so obedient to her father. Her father is, you know her father. What's her father's name? Your people. Her father's name is? Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan, 
and he was not a Muslim at the time. So Abu Sufyan came to Medina to see his daughter, Umm Habiba. They're sitting down. Abu, Abu Sufyan, he goes, and he wants to sit on the belly, on the, on the I'm sorry, he wants to sit on the, on the bedding of the Prophet Muhammad. The Prophet wasn't home. Umm Habiba, she rushed, she took the bedding of the Prophet, she folded it, and then she put it to the side. The prophet, the, uh, Abu, her father, her father, which she has not seen for a long time, he told her, Ummu Habiba, I don't know who's most beloved to you, me, your father, or that bedin of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She says, oh father, yes, I do love you, but this is the bedin of Rasulullah, wa anta mushrikun najas, and you're not pure, you're not pure. You're not supposed to be sitting on the bedin of Rasulullah. Yes, you're my dad. But this is the bedding of Rasulullah, and you're not pure. You're a mushrik, you're not pure. You cannot sit on the bedding of Rasulullah. Loving Rasulullah is by mimicking, mimicking him, alayhi salatu salam. Reviving the sunnah of Rasulullah. Where is the Prophet Muhammad in your lives today? Where is Prophet Muhammad in your, in your houses today? Where is Prophet Muhammad in your dealings today? In your dealings with Muslims? In your dealings with non-Muslims? Where is Prophet Muhammad in your dealings with non-Muslims? Where is Prophet Muhammad in your work? In your homes? With your dealings with your spouses? In your dealings with your children? Where is Rasulullah? If you claim that you love Rasulullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ الله. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, say, if you love Allah, follow the footsteps of Rasulullah. Allah shall love you. If you love Allah, if you love Allah, if you want Allah to love you, follow the footsteps of Rasulullah. Allah shall love you. If you want to earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, read the Quran. Read the Quran, recite the Quran, and then Allah will love you. There was this man, the, uh, the Imam of Masjid Quba at the time of Rasulullah, the Imam of Masjid Quba in Medina. Every day, every time he used to pray, is the Imam, he used to recite Surah Qul Wallahu Had. Qul Wallahu Surah Tawheed. The Sahaba, they went complaining to Rasulullah. Ya Rasulullah, this man, when he leaves the Salah, he always reads Qul Wallahu Had. Maybe that's all he knows. They won't complain, Ya Rasulullah. Rasulullah called him. Why? You always recite, Qul Wallahu Ahad. He says, Ya Rasulullah, Wallahi, because I love it. I love the Quran and I love this surah. The Prophet told him, Your love for this surah made you or earned you the love of Allah. The love of this surah earned you the love of Allah. Because you love this surah so much, Allah loves you so much. Read the Quran. It will earn you the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And nawafil Superrogatory work, voluntary work will earn you the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as reported in Bukhari. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this hadith Qudusi, the more think for my servant to come close to me, there is nothing needed or there is nothing better for my servant to come to me or closer to me other than the obligatory actions. Al-Fara'id, obligatory actions. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the more nawafil that my servant does, that I shall love him. The more nawafil that a person does, the more nawafil, the more extra prayers that you do, that will earn you the love of Allah. And you know what happens when that earns, when that happens? When that happens, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the same hadith, فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ When Allah loves you, He calls Jibreel and He says, Ya Jibreel, Listen to this, please. Listen to this. Ya Jibreel, I love Fulan. Uhibbu Fulan. Oh Jibreel, I love so and so. And he mentions your name. Ya Jibreel, I love Muhammad. Ya Jibreel, I love Ahmed. Ya Jibreel, I love, I love Yusuf. Ya Jibreel, I love Aisha. I love Khadija. I love Maria. I love Ya Jibreel, I love this person. You love him. And Jibreel will love you. And Jibreel calls upon all the angels. Gabriel. Gabriel, he calls upon all the angels and he says, Ya you al malaika, all you angels, Allah and I love so and so, love so and so. You love him and all the angels will love you. Is that enough? No, it's not enough. And all the angels will love you. And then all the angels will call on the people of the earth. Will call on the people of the earth. All you people of the earth, Allah and Jibreel, and us the angels love so and so. So you love him. And everybody on earth shall love you. What does that mean? You go everywhere you go, people will be smiling at your face. People, they don't even know you sometimes and they look at you, they say, Subhanallah, Wallahi, I've never seen you, but Subhanallah, there's something attractive about you. I don't know what it is. I just love you for the sake of Allah. What earned you that? What earned, it, earned you that? The extra voluntary that prayers that you do, the nawafil that you do. 
the supererogatory prayers that you do will earn you the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, dhikr of Allah, the remembrance of Allah will earn you the love of Allah. The dhikr of Allah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, allahu akbar, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah, the istighfar, all these things will earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to Ali, listen to Ali, radiallahu anhu arda. He says, he says, I looked upon and contemplated upon this universe and I found that iron is the strongest creation of Allah. Iron, metal, metal is the strongest creation of Allah. And then when I saw that metal, you know, with, with contact with fire, the metal you know, melts, then I came to know that fire is the strongest creation of Allah. And then when the rain came down and put out the fire, I came to know that actually water is the strongest creation of Allah. And then he said, when, you know, this, this rain is caused by, you know, these fogs, these clouds, Clouds, he said, are the strongest creation of Allah. And then when he looked at the mountains blocking clouds from moving, he says, mountains are the strongest creation of Allah. And then he saw a man standing on the top of a mountain, and he says, man is the strongest creation of Allah. And then this man can only operate, can only survive with this heart. He says, heart is the strongest creation of Allah. And then this heart can only feel, feel peace. This heart can only feel serenity. This heart can only feel comfort. For comfort with the remembrance of Allah, he says, Dikr Allah, the remembrance of Allah is the strongest creation of Allah. Dikr Allah, A'adham khalqillah, A'adham khalaq Allah. Make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, uh, Qiyam al layl the night prayer will earn you the love of Allah. The night prayer. Imagine, imagine my brothers and sisters, by Allah, I only have less than 10 minutes left. By Allah, if you know that your father is waiting for you someplace, or your mother is waiting for you someplace, waiting, she's there waiting, Meskina. Or your ma father is there someplace waiting for you. Somebody that you love really is waiting for you someplace. Would, would you leave that person waiting for you? La, you will rush, you will go because that person is waiting for you. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of this universe, he comes down in a way that befits his majesty. He comes down in the last, you know, third of the night, in the last third of the night, he comes down in, to the lowest heaven, to the lowest heaven, and he looks at the people, you know, and he says, who is praying? I shall accept his prayer. Yani Allah is waiting for you. He's waiting. He says, he's looking. Who is seeking forgiveness? I shall forgive him. Who is, who is making dua? I shall accept his dua. I shall grant his, his dua. Who is praying? I shall accept his prayers. Would you leave Allah waiting? A lot of us do. A lot of us do. We let him wait. We keep waiting. No, you sleep. You sleep better than Allah waiting. Aib, 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 aib. How can you earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Stand up and pray. Wallahi la ilaha illa illa. As the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam says in the hadith reported by Bukhari, the most beloved salah in the sight of Allah after the fard salah is the night prayer. Is the night prayer. If you want to be able to soften your heart, if you want to be able to cry like a baby, try qiyam al -layl. Try the night prayer and you will see what the night prayer will do to your heart. You will see what the night prayer will do to your family. You will see what the night prayer you do with you, to your work, to your sustenance. Allah will put barakah in your innovative and you do. Allah will put barakah in your health. Allah will put barakah in your wealth, in your sustenance, in, in, in your sahha, in everything that you do. You, put, you go forward. Allah will put barakah in that step that you make. Why? Qiyam al-layl, my brothers and sisters. Try it, try it, try it, try it, try it. Another thing that will earn you the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, two more things. Another thing that will earn you, there's so many things in fact. There's so many things, but I'm just summarizing them for you. Visiting one another. When was the last time you went to visit someone for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When was the last time you went to visit someone for the sake of Allah? There's this hadith in Sahih Muslim. In Sahih Muslim. A man undertook a journey to visit somebody in this other town. In the middle of the way, he found someone who met him and he says, that person told him, where are you going? He says, I'm going to this other town to visit so and so. The man asked him, 
Do you have anything that you need from him? This is that why you're going to visit him because you have something from him. Like you need something from him. The man said no. The man said no. Wallahi, I don't need anything from him. Wallahi, I'm going to visit him just because I love him for the sake of Allah. I'm going to visit him because I love him for the sake of Allah. This hadith is in Sahih Muslim. The man said, glad tidings to you. I'm an angel. Allah has sent me to tell you that he loves you just like he loved that man that you chose to go and visit for the sake of Allah. I am an angel. Allah has sent me to tell you that he loves you just because you love that man that you so chose to go and visit him for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a sound, authentic hadith. Visit each other. It will earn you the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other things that will earn you the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers and sisters, tawbah. Allah yuhibbu tawabin. Repentance. In fact, there's a, a long lecture about tawbah. Lectures and lectures and lectures about repentance. Allah loves those who repent. Allah loves those who are sabirin. Patience. Those who are patient. Those who persevere. Allah loves them if you want to earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah loves cleanliness. And he loves those who remain in the state of purity, in the state of cleanness. All this will earn in the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I will end my talk with one thing at the end. Something that will earn in the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is this. Is this. There is a hadith reported by Ibn Abdul Barr. Wa dhakarahu Ibn Ayn fil Hiliyah. Wa sahahu Shaykhun al-Albani rahmatullah alayhi. This hadith is very sound and authentic. It was narrated by a man by the name of Abu Idris al-Khawlani. Abu Idris al-Khawlani, he says, I went to a masjid in Damascus. I went to a masjid in Damascus. I entered the masjid in Damascus. Anybody from Syria here? Anybody from Syria? Nobody from Syria. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's some people from Syria, may Allah give victory to the people in Syria. May Allah alleviate his punishment and the wrath you know, that, that he has afflicted those people with. May Allah alleviate that wrath and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them victory inshallah and give them nusrah. My brothers and sisters, this man, he says, I went to that masjid in Damascus and I found a man giving a lecture. I saw a man giving a lecture. I sat down listening, listening to that man. After the man finished his lecture, I asked, I said, who is that man who was giving the lecture? They told me his name is Mu'ad. Mu'ad ibn Jabal. Mu'ad ibn Jabal is a companion. He's a companion. Abu Idris al-Khawlani is not a companion. He's a predecessor. He did not see the Prophet. But he lived in the era of companions. So he says, who's that man who's giving a lecture? They told him that man, his name is Mu'ad. The next day he says, Abu Idris, he says, I came to the masjid early because I want to meet, Abu, Abu, I want to meet Mu'ad. He came early. And then he found Mu'ad already in the masjid praying. He sat down waiting for Mu'ad to finish the salah. When Mu'ad finished the salah, he went to him. Abu Idris went to him. And he says, Oh Mu'ad, Oh Mu'ad, Oh Mu'ad, Wallahi, I love you. Wallahi, inni la uhibbuk. Mu'ad says, Allah. Mu'ad says, Are you serious? Yani in our words today. Are you sure? What do you know me? What do you mean that you don't love me? Mu'ad says, Allah, are you sure? Are you serious? Uh, Abu Idris says, Wallah, Allah, Wallahi, I love you. Wallahi, I love you. And then Mu'ad for the second time, he says, Allah, Allah, are you serious? For the second time, Abu Idris said, Wallahi, I love you. And then Mu'ad for the third time, he says, Allah, Allah, are you really, really, really? Do you know what he's talking about? You don't know me. How come, how, what do you mean you love me for the sake of Allah? You don't know me. Allah, then the third time Abu says, Wallahi, I love you, man. I love you. Not man, he didn't say, Oh man. And today I'm saying, Oh man, but he says, Wallahi, I love you. And then Abu Idris says, and then Mu'ad said, Now the hadith becomes hadith. From, from this narration from Abu Idris to the narration got elevated to hadith. Hadith reported by Mu'ad. Now Mu'ad says, I heard the Prophet. I heard the Prophet. Please sit down. I'm almost done. Please. Law samahtum. Mu'ad says, 
I heard from the Prophet that Allah says, now the hadith has again been elevated to another category. The hadith becomes hadith Qudusi. I have heard from the Prophet that Allah says, وَجَبَتْ مَحَبَّتِي عَلَى الْمُتَحَبِّينَ فِيَّ وَجَبَتْ مَحَبَّتِي عَلَى الْمُتَجَالِسِينَ فِيَّ وَجَبَتْ مَحَبَّتِي عَلَى الْمُتَزَاوِرِينَ فِيَّ The Prophet Muhammad says that Allah says, Allah says, I shall love those who love each other for my sake. I shall love them. I shall love those who visit each other for my sake. I shall love those who sit with one another, who sit with one another for my sake. I shall love them. Yani, my brothers and sisters, this type of gathering that we'll hear today will earn us the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who said so? Allah said so in the hadith. Whoever, whoever sits this kind of gathering, he shall earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma lakal hamd. Allahumma lakal hamdu hatta tarda. Wa lakal hamdu idha radit. Wa lakal hamdu ba'da rida. Lakal hamdu bil Qur'an. Wa lakal hamdu bil Islam. Wa lakal hamdu bil Iman. Lakal hamdu kulluh. Wa ilayka arja'u al-fadlu kulluh. Allahumma lakal hamd. Maybe some of you have come here with some different intentions or whatever your intention was. But let me assure you that whatever your intention is, this type of gathering will earn you the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And my brothers and sisters, just like the Prophet says in the hadith reported by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad and uh, At-Tirmidhi in his Sunan, the hadith is narrated by Al-Miqdad that the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, says, the Prophet says, إِذَا أَحَبَّ الرَّجْلُ أَخَاهُ فَلْيُخْبِرْهُ أَنَّهُ يُحِبُّ فِي اللَّهِ The Prophet Muhammad والسلام, says, this is my final words. The Prophet Muhammad والسلام, says in this hadith, sound and authentic, when a man loves his brother, he should tell him that he loves him. When a man loves his brother, he should tell him that he loves him. When a woman loves her sister, she should tell her that he, or that, not he, that she loves her. Who says that? The Prophet Muhammad والسلام, He says, إِذَا أَحَبَّ الرَّجْلُ أَخَاهُ فَلْيُخْبِرْهُ 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 أَنَّهُ يُحِبُّهُ فِي اللَّهِ إِذَا أَحَبَّ الرَّجْلُ أَخَاهُ When you love a man for the sake of Allah, go to him and tell him that you love him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my witness. The angels are my witness. I said it before and I will say it again. I swear it by him. I swear by him. And I swear by the one who holds my soul. I love you all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I love you all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Please stand up all. Hug each other and tell to each other. You love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tell each other that you love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bring that. Revive the sunnah of Rasulullah. Revive the sunnah of Rasulullah. Revive the sunnah of Rasulullah. This is the sunnah of Rasulullah. Just like you say, subhanallah. Just like you say, alhamdulillah. Just like you say, la ilaha illallah. Just like you say, astaghfirullah. Just like you did the Quran. Wallahi ladi la ilaha illahu. Just like the recitation of the Quran. Just like the dhikr of Allah. Say it to your brother that you love him. Say to your sister that you love her for the sake of Allah. It is a ibadah. It is a ibadah. It is a worship. It is a worship which we have neglected. It is a worship which we have humiliated. Revive the sunnah of Rasulullah. May Allah love us all. May Allah love you all. May Allah gather us all upon and the companionship of the Prophet Muhammad alayhi May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Zakum Allah khair. Barakallahu feekum. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. الله أكبر الله أكبر I am a 17 year old girl who is in a difficult relationship I am in a hidden relationship with a Muslim Pakistani guy we never did anything more than kissing الله أكبر I feel bad, I feel bad, like I deserve to be punished. What should I do because I'm afraid of my parents don't allow me to marry a non-Somali? You can answer her if you want, or you can answer there, it's up to you, Shaykh. Allahumma la sahla illa ma ja'altahu sahla, wa anta taj'alu al-hazna idha shi'ta sahla. First of all, I would like just um, um, to clarify little thing I would rather I would wish 
if the questions, you know, if you were to pause or pose a question, try to avoid mentioning countries or cultures. Just say, I maybe, you know, whatever the question is, but try not to mention the name of that country or whatnot because uh, things become really sensitive here. Um, that's number one. Number two, um, this sister, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide her and forgive her, she's in this uh, haram relationship with this brother. I, she did not do anything, Zalla khair, other than kissing, she says. Yani miskina, she's very innocent. Yani she didn't do anything other than kissing. Even that, we didn't know, want to know. Any, but subhanallah. And then she says at the end, she feels very bad because um, she feels her father. Yani, as if she's saying, um, I'm, I'm afraid of Allah more than my father. I'm, uh, no, I'm sorry, the opposite. I'm afraid of my father more than Allah. Yani, you're afraid of your father. You're afraid to disappoint your father. Zadla khair, may Allah, may Allah bless you. May, you, know, you are afraid to disappoint your, your father. But how about Allah? You know, <coughs> these two Arabs. Oh, I just said I shouldn't mention countries. <laughs> but Arab is okay. <laughs> Especially Moroccans. These uh, Bedouins, let's say Bedouins, Bedouins. Then the Bedouins, everybody's asleep in the desert. And then this man goes to this woman. He says, Ta'ali, Ta'ali. Abka, come here, come here, here, uh, in, in Urdu. Uh, uh, hedra, Hedra. Hedra. He says, La ahad yandru ilayna illa al-kawaik. Ma fi hada illa al He says, she says, come, come, come. There's nobody except, look, subhanal kareem. <laughs> you sisters, you have to be really, really, really careful and you have to be awake. Look at this guy. Sometimes, you know, guys, they are known. May Allah, you know, those guys who are not good, but I'm talking about, may Allah guide them. They, they, they like to sweet talk to you, you know, sweet talk to you. This guy says, come, 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 come. There's nobody except the stars. <laughs> he wants to make it sound so romantic. Hey, it's just you and I and the stars. <laughs> and she would say, ooh. <laughs> but she fears Allah. <laughs> she fears Allah. She says, he told her, ما في حدا ليس هناك حدا إلا الكواكب لا ينظرين إلا أحد إلا الكواكب كواكب. قالت له, يا هذا وأين مكوكبها وأين مكوكبها she says, he says, there's nobody except the stars. She says, oh man, yahada, if only the stars are looking at us, how about, in, if you were to convert or translate this thing to, to English, it won't make no sense, but I'm going to try to give you the closest translation. Oh man, if the stars are the only ones looking at us, how about Allah, the creator of those stars? How about Allah, the creator of the stars? Allah al-Raqib. Allah al shaheed Allah al muhaymin Allah al samir Allah al basir All names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The all seeing, the all hearing, the all compassion subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is Allah? You're afraid of your father, but you're not afraid of Allah who's watching you? How can you not be? If, يعني, what kind of heart أخي, you have? Sister, brothers, يخي, sometimes you have to look at your heart. Maybe your heart is dead. أخي. You need to awaken your heart. You need to revive your heart. You need to wake up from that sleep of heedlessness. Wallahi, wallahi, wallahi. Allah is watching you every step that you move. Allah al-Raqib. Muraqaba. 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 He's watching you. The all watchful subhanahu wa ta'ala. I tell you, sister, please. Tawb to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Cut any ties with that brother. This is my opinion. Huh? As, a, as a marriage officer, I tell you, I've heard of such stories and I've heard of much even worse stories than this. Right? I tell you, cut any ties with that guy. Listen, listen. Tell him if he is serious, if he is serious, tell him to come and pay a visit to your dad. And then you will see if the guy is serious. Tell him, listen, if you want me, you have to come to the door. Sisters, can you say that? Say to him, if you are serious, come to the door. Don't come to the window. <laughs> how did I come from to you here, Fakhid? Did you see me coming down from the, the ceiling? Is this how I came? You know, oh, marhaba, Sheikh Riyadh, and I came. <laughs> did I, I, I came to that door. 
I came to that door. The proper way to come in, I came to the door. Tell the guy, come to the door. Don't come to from the window. If he is serious, come and bring your family. Uh, come and approach my family. And then you will see if this guy is serious. Make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Cut any ties. Allah is ghafur rahim inshaAllah ta'ala. As long as you really feel bad about what you have, what has, has happened, don't, don't worry about it. You know, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and move on with your life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. The next question is, I know one should love for the sake of Allah, but can't I love someone for other reasons and for the sake of Allah? Okay. It's the same question. Yani, A'adham hub. Hub Allah, ba'dahu yati. Hub. Rasulullah, na'am. Al-hubbu fillah. I was listening to Sheikh uh, Al Hawari, and he was saying, "I've tasted things, but I've never tasted something as sweet as loving somebody for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala." Why? Because it's so pure. There is no malice behind that feeling, be behind that love. It is purely the love for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So if your love is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will reward you for that love insha'Allah subhanahu wa So I try and I'm telling you, try to stick to the love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you love me for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your love is so pure. You would not want anything from me, you know. Uh, why? Because you love me for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether I give you or not give you, you love me for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't only love me when I give you. I'm talking to the, those who are married as well. Love your husband for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not because he has to buy you something to love you. That's called conditional love. There is selfish love, there is conditional love, and there is unconditional love. Make it unconditional love. Aywa. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. I'm 19 years old, and I have uh, prayed for, for, for two years. I'm translating from Norwegian, so it's... Yeah. But now I've been... I have prayed for what? Uh, I've prayed Salah in two years. Oh, okay. But uh, now I've been lazy with Salah. It can go many days. I don't pray and I'm feeling guilty. I've made Tawbah uh, before but fallen back in the same thing. I feel like a munafiq and I delay Tawbah and I'm afraid that Allah will not accept my Tawbah. Do Allah you have any advice? Allah Akbar. Zakla khair. This reminds me of the saying of Hassan al-Basri rahmatullah alayhi when somebody says, you know, if... Uh, if you uh, make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you repent to Allah and then you go back and commit the same sin. And then you go back and commit tawbah as well. And then you, you know, do tawbah, come back and commit the same sin. You know, at some point, would you quit? He says, do not quit. Keep always making tawbah. Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullah alayhi says, the word tawbah in deen, he says, ad-deenu kulluhu fi hadha al-ma'na, fi tawbah. The entire deen is embedded in one term called tawbah, repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's why Allah deserves to be called, you know, at-tawab, look, Allah has this name, at-tawab, Allah has this name, al-ghafur, Allah has this name, al-ghafar, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has this most beautiful name, you know, for me, all the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're called the most beautiful names of Allah, but there's certain name that you re can relate to, this name of Allah, al-afu, this name of Allah, al-afu, you have at-tawab, you have the name of Allah, Tawab. The one who has initiated Tawbah. Imagine, my brothers and sisters, if there was no Tawbah. Imagine. If the name of Allah, Tawab, did not exist. Imagine what would happen. Imagine, really, really, seriously. If the name of Allah, Tawab, did not exist. What would happen? Chaos. Because you will commit a sin and you don't care. There's no Tawbah. You keep on, you know, chaos will happen. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one, he initiated Tawbah. And then he made you sometimes commit sins so that you may go back to him and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah reveals himself as Al-Ghafoor. Al-Ghafoor, the forgiver. And then you have Al-Ghaffar. What is the difference between Al-Ghafoor and Al-Ghaffar? Those Arabs, even the Arabs may not understand the difference between Al-Ghafoor and Al-Ghaffar. They may say, uh, they mean the same. No, they do not mean the same. Al-Ghaffar is more concerned, concise, is more uh, uh, Al-Ghaffar is actually more concise than Al-Ghafur. They all mean, you know, they all forgive her, but Al-Ghaffar is like the supreme forgiver, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahmatullah, Ali says, Al-Dunya 
لا تطيب إلا بذكر الله والآخرة لا تطيب إلا بعفو الله والجنة لا تطيب إلا برؤية الله ابن القيم رحمة الله عليه says this dunya is not really pleasurable except with the remembrance of Allah then it becomes sweet and al-akhirah the hereafter is not pleasurable except with the afu of Allah with the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a man will come filled with sins as the Prophet Muhammad says in Bukhari sins as far as the eye can see 99 scrolls 99 scrolls as far it's scroll as far as the eye can see all filled with with what with sins with sins Allah will forgive them all subhanahu wa ta'ala and then you have the other name the other name and this name comes in to this sister has as this question or this brother has asked this question or those sometimes who have doubts can Allah forgive me I tell you before I tell you that name I tell you are you the one who has killed Hamza are you the one who has killed 99 lives or 100 lives in fact how many lives have you killed how many people have you killed? Text back to that person, ask her how many she killed or he killed. She would say, oh, no, 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 I didn't kill. Tayyib, if Allah has forgiven the one who has killed 100 lives, wouldn't he forgive you? Even the one who has killed Hamza, the uncle of Rasulullah, has been forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wouldn't he forgive you? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has this beautiful name, the name of Allah, Al-Afu. Even Aisha, she came and she says, Ya Rasulullah, teach me something to say in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. He told her, say, Allahumma inna ka'afuun, the forgiver, the pardoner, the partner. You know what Al-Afu in Arabic, Afa, in Arabic, Afa, linguistically, Afa, ay maha, maha, you know, erase. Erase in Arabic linguistically, Afu means to erase something. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals Himself as Al Afu, the one who erases the sins. Ya'ani Al Ghafur will forgive you, yet you may see your sins there. When you stand before Allah, you may see your sins. The forgiver will forgive you, Al Ghafur will forgive you, Al Tawab will accept your repentance, but you may see your sins. You may go to the muhasaba, but al-afu, what al-afu will do? Al-afu will erase your sins. They will not be there at all. That's why the Prophet told her, say, Allahumma oh, naka afu tuhibbu al-afu fa'fu anni. Oh Allah, you are the oft forgiver and you love to forgive. You love to pardon. So forgive me. Erase my sins. I ask this sister or that brother, ask Allah with his beautiful name. Ask him with al-afu to erase your sins and inshallah ta'ala keep on praying you know we all commit sins we all in fact there's nobody in father you know we all commit sins but as soon as you you know come back repent to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and move on don't let the shaytan trick you نعم. no no is it more because the, the shuyuh ah, طيب. Sound, please. The next question is, inshallah, how do I know that I have earned the love of Allah? How can I know? Ya salam. So I have to repeat the whole lecture all over again. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa sallatu wa rasulillah. We all came from different countries. We all came from different cities. I came and I flew. Some people came swimming. Some people came on. Came, came. How can you earn the love? How can you know that you earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Very good question. The ta'ha will become easy. Obedience of Allah will become easy. You may commit a sin, you will be swift in repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, that sin will seem to will taste so bitter to you. You will start crying off of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will, will, will uh, ease up things for you. You will see. Things will become so easy for you, subhanAllah. Everywhere you go, you'll see blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is loving you. There's so many signs. When you love someone, you prove to that person that you love him. 
Love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, I can, I can tell you, honey tastes good, honey is sweet, but the day and only day when you taste that honey, then you can really understand the sweetness of it and really understand that that, that tayba, you know, the, 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 uh, that, that, that taste of it. I can tell you, love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try to come close to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try to obey his command subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try to mimic the Prophet Muhammad sallam. Try to revive the sunnah of Rasulullah. Try to pray at night. Try to uh, make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Things that we talked about. Try to uh, uh, um, uh, um, read the Quran. All the stuff that we talked about. And then and only then, you shall feel this ridwan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's something sweet. It's something, it's a feeling. It's a heart. It's a feeling you can only taste it or you can only feel it once you taste it insha'Allah ta'ala Jazakallah khair Sheikh the next question is we are supposed to love another Muslim for the sake of Allah subhanahu ta'ala but this person did something I feel is wrong to me and I cannot forgive him for no. that no. what should I do <laughs> the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, says in hadith reported by Bukhari He says, Ali Sattu Salam, what does the hadith say again? Yes. That you shall taste the sweetness of Iman. When now I'm loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you shall taste the sweetness of Iman. When you love someone, you love him for the sake of Allah. When you hate someone, you hate for the sake of Allah. What does that mean? Hate someone, hate for the sake of Allah. You don't hate him as a person, you hate the sin that that person does. Ya akhi, ana, we, you and I, were fine. Akhi, wallahi, you're my brother. I love you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the fact that you smoke hashish, the fact that you drink alcohol, the fact that you don't pray, the fact, I hate that act. It's not you. You, as a person, I love you for the sake of Allah. You're human being, akhi. You're my brother in Islam. But I hate the fact that you disobey your parents, that you dishonor your parents, that you swear, that you curse. I hate that ma'siyah. That's when the Prophet says in this hadith, you know, that you shall taste the sweetness of Iman once you acquire these three things. Finish? Some question from the sisters, inshallah? Tayyip, bismillah. Assalamu alaikum. The question is, how do we repent sincerely? This sister who has asked this question, we ask her, you know, we ask her a question back. How does she feel about that sin that she committed? If she says, I don't feel anything, I feel cool, then we say, maybe Allah has not accepted your repentance. You feel cool, and you don't feel no, if she says, um, in fact, every time I, feel, I think about that sin, I feel, I feel like, wow, I feel good then that's a sign that Allah has not accepted your repentance. But if you ask that person, he asks, you know, how do you feel when you think of that sin? And I'm asking you, all of you here, we all committed sins, we all committed haram. How do you feel when you think of that sin that you committed? If you say, like one sister, she told me once in one of the seminars, she says, yeah, she, I feel sick in my stomach. Really, I feel sick in my stomach. I can't stop crying. I say that's a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted your repentance. When you feel really bad, as Ahl al-Ilm, they have said, they've given us conditions and requirements. Number one, you have to live the sin. Leave it, khalas, seize it, stop it right away. You cannot say, may Allah give me guidance, and I repent to Allah, and then you keep smoking. Uh, may Allah guide me. Now you stop smoking on the spot. You seize it, khalas, terminate it. And then you make an intention not to go back to it again. You made an intention, I will not go back to it again. So this sister, I tell her, if she feels bad about the sin, if she feels uh, a bitterness, if every time she thinks of it, she cries and says, Oh Allah, what was I thinking? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. That's a sign that Allah has accepted her repentance. Fadlullah. Jazakallah khair. 
Do we have any more questions from the sisters? Yes? Bismillah. I mean, the thing about repentance, it's really a very long um, topic. I'm just trying to um, summarize the, uh, the answers because I only have a couple minutes left. Okay, no question over there? We have a question there. Where in the Quran does it say that one has to pray five times daily and it says how to pray in the Quran or do we know all this from the Hadith? If I get this answer, I want to start to pray. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> all right. Is this a brother or a sister? A brother or a sister, whoever asked this question, I'm willing, I'm willing, I'm not going to sleep tonight. I'm going to stay do qiyam al-layl with you. I'm going to be with you. Come to me, inshallah, I'm going to be waiting. And we talk, you and I. I'm going to give you the proof. Whatever proof you want. Because you said, if you give me the proof, I will start praying. You come to me, I'm going to be here. I won't do nothing tonight. I'm going to concentrate my time to you. Whether you're a brother or a sister, then we have a... <laughs> <laughs> if she's a sister, I can still talk, inshallah ta'ala, with the company of uh, another sister that with the shur, inshallah, would sit. And then I will give them private sessions, you know, private time with all the evidence that they want to hear from, from the Quran or the Sunnah that the Salah does exist. Because there's a lot of things. I cannot just say, give me the evidence, you know, is it the Quran or is it in the Sunnah? No, we have things from the Quran and we have things from the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad wasallam. So, please approach us. I'll be right outside and I will stay, inshallah ta'ala, to answer your question until you are pleased. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. Almost every time I do good, a thought in my head tells that I'm showing off. Doing deeds in private has helped, but even then, the thought tells me that I'm just justifying my hypocrisy. Do you have any answer, my heart, that so that can make my heart find peace? Huh? Do you have any answer that can make my heart find peace? Oh yes, there is. <laughs> this brother or sister who asked this question, actually, it came up so sweet, so happy. I'm very happy. Uh, they just texted me from uh, Al Maghrib HQ. They said, please mention your next course in Sweden. I'm telling you, this brother or sister, whoever has uh, asked this question, uh, next month I'm going to be teaching in Sweden a two weekend course about the heart and how to find peace of heart. Please, whoever asked that question, come to Sweden. Yes, you need to make an effort. You can't just sit here and say, oh, clean my heart and your heart will be clean. You have to make an uh, effort. Come travel to Sweden, inshallah ta'ala. Sweden is only one hour drive anyways, isn't it? One hour drive from here, Sweden. Six hours to, to, Six hours? to the place that you have your lecture. I think. Six hours. In Stockholm, right? Yeah, Stockholm. I think it's... It's only two hours. <laughs> Depending on how fast you drive. <laughs> come, inshallah, seriously, seriously, come. I talk all about the heart, the soul. How to find the peace of heart, how to find the peace of mind, how to know the difference between the whisper of shaitan and the whisper of the nafs, of the soul. It's all about the heart, it's all about yourself, it's all about, you know, you as a person, you know, and how to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, inshallah, that person will have the answer there in that course. Okay, inshallah. Right? One second. Khalas. You want to finish? Okay, inshallah. No, no, is it finished? No, I have many questions. But I just need to find a suitable one. Do we have any from the sisters? No? No, the sisters, they know everything, mashallah. Okay, I'm a mother and I want my son to get married. How can he find a Muslim girl in a halal way? <laughs> he is here tonight and he would be happy for some answers. How old is he? How I don't know, Shia. Oh, How can you help your son find a, a wife? Yes, a in, wife. Tw in 20 seconds. In 20 seconds. Well, you're in the right place, sister. What can I tell you, you know? <laughs> she has a boy, right? She has a boy and she's looking yes. for, the, for the girl. Yes, yes. she can look. Among she them. can look. Allah gave her eyes. She can look. <laughs> oh, what can I tell you, sister? There's mashallah, tabarakallah. You know, look around. <laughs> <laughs> Come to Morocco. <laughs> what else does she want me to say? Come to Morocco. I will, f I will find you... Son? No, she, she has a son, she wants a girl. No, no, no. Yeah, okay, come to Morocco, I'll find you a girl, inshallah ta'ala, for your son. <laughs> if she was not able to find a girl here, then we can help her, inshallah. Inshallah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khair, barakallahu feekum. We see you tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah bless you all. Jazakumullah khair. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, shadu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, shadu alayhi wa sallam.
Hey, stand up. Oh, stand up. I missed something. No, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Are you ready? Stand up. I'm going to challenge you all. Brothers, all try to touch your toes. Stretch, stretch. Touch your toes. Stre you know. Yeah, you will. Touch your toes. Don't cheat. Sisters, stay. <laughs> <laughs> Sisters hug. They love hugging. Hug, hug. <laughs> hug, hug. Hug. Okay, here's the nice thing that we're all going to do. Come here, come here, come here. Here's what we're going to do all together. I call this the train. You only get this in Norway. The train massage. All together. All together. Train. Train massage. There you are. There you Train massage. Nice, nice, nice. Use your head. Brothers, enjoy it, enjoy it. Switch, switch. Turn, turn, switch. Nice, nice. Easy, easy, easy. Jazakum Allah khair. May Allah bless you all. We're here, inshallah ta'ala, with the company of the angels. We have the shuyukh who are here. You know, please try to take time to listen to the shuyukh. They have come from very far. They have come from very far. Sheikh, uh, 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 the mashayikh from the U.S., from Canada, from, from, from England, mashallah, from, tabarakallah, from, from, from Somalia. Yes, we have them from everywhere, mashallah, tabarakallah. Please, this is the time to, I always say, milk the shuyukh, milk them, milk them, milk them. Like you milk cows. May Allah bless you all. Barakallah fikum, zaykum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.